Joining us now from Detroit, Robert Lutz, Vice Chairman of Global Product Development for General Motors. Bob, good morning. Good morning. You've got about half of the money uh, the automakers are looking for. Is it enough? Well, it's certainly enough short term because we do have a, a very short term liquidity problem. And I think um, the amount of money that would be allocated to GM under this plan would certainly get us well into the next administration, at which point we can discuss what it's really going to take. You know, a lot of it depends not on what we do, but what the general economy does, because this, this um, revenue crisis on the part of the industry has been triggered by the fact that we're looking at the lowest market uh, since World War II. We're from a normal market of about 17 million a year, we're down to 10.5 million units. If that lasts for quite a long time, it's going to take more than a simple restructuring. So in simple words, what does your business really need to turn around? Well, it needs, a, it needs a stronger market. We need the economy to recover. Right now, people aren't buying. They're worried about their jobs. They can't get credit. Uh, and, and so the, the whole thing is locked up. The, I, I will tell you, the automobile business in the United States is not viable at the current level. So it's going to take not only some temporary help from the federal government, but it's also going to take uh, the federal government undertaking the steps necessary to get our economy back on track, right. free up the credit, and get people buying cars again. Hard to keep a sustainable business if people in America have just actually stopped buying cars, which is the case right now. Right. Does, does, does this loan and all that comes with it, does Detroit need a car czar? Well, uh, whether we need it or not, I think it's reasonable that when the federal government steps in with taxpayer money, uh, they're, not going to, they're not going to lend us the money and uh, just say, do the best you can with it uh, and uh, tell us when you need more. Obviously, there's going to be some kind of oversight, and I think that's a reasonable thing to expect. I would hope, however, that it is someone with a knowledge of the industry, who knows what's going on, who realizes what our capital needs are, who realize the pressures that this industry is under uh, to meet all kinds of regulations, uh, whether it's federal regulations or California regulations. I actually welcome it. I, I, I think having the federal government see our problems yeah. and our challenges from the inside yeah. is a very good thing. All right. Robert Lutz uh, from Detroit this morning. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Sure. You Thank bet. you. All right. Here's Maggie. Thanks, Harry. Also in Detroit this morning is Ron Gettelfinger, president of the United Auto Workers. Ron, good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Maggie. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm wondering if you have any reservations about having a car czar oversee the restructuring of these companies, and would you consider that person sort of your new boss? Well, I don't know that they would be considered a new boss, but I think that's going to come with a plan, and we have absolutely no problem with that. We've been saying that all along. Everyone has made concessions in order for this deal to go through, and that includes your union. But now the UAW is, is requesting a seat on GM's board as a condition of further concessions. Some would say that that's exploiting a weak and desperate company. Well, I'm not sure uh, where that information's coming from because we have not really entered into any negotiations at this point in time uh, with so the company. So you do not want a seat on GM's board? Is that what you're saying? I did not say that we didn't want it. I'm not, I'm not sure just exactly how this is going to unfold. Certainly, we made a lot of concessions uh, in 05. We made much more in 07. And then just last week, we made additional concessions. So look, when we go into these discussions, we look for all stakeholders to be there and at that point in time we'll make decisions on what it is we should or shouldn't do but if we're going to be asked to give up more and it appears that we are then uh, we should have some an equity stake in the company do you feel that you have given up enough uh, I think what we have given up is dramatic, and I think uh, the, the agreement in 07 was hailed as a transformational agreement by everybody in the industry and, there, and most analysts outside of the industry. So uh, to say that we've given up enough, I, I would like to think that we have, but I'm realistic enough to know that more is going to be required, and the membership, the leadership of our union is prepared to step up and do whatever it is that we have to do to maintain a viable business. 
in but, this but Ron, uh, in the auto industry. If you're asked to give up more, why would you deserve an equity stake in the company? Why wouldn't you happily make the concessions that everyone else is making to save the auto industry? Well, uh, I'm not sure uh, the concessions that anyone has made up to this point in time. Uh, I know that uh, board of directors are going to have to be involved in this, management, suppliers, dealers, creditors, uh, stakeholders. And I, I like to think of it this way. Uh, we're already on third base. Uh, the other stakeholders have not even come to the ballpark yet. So uh, I just think we have to be realistic here and get everybody to the table. No one, to my knowledge, has made concessions. Could, could you tell me what the creditors uh, have done, for instance? I know of nothing at this point. All right, Ron Gettelfinger, thank you for your time.